Hi, how come that Apache Flink offers the exactly once delivery semantics when using specific types of external sources and sinks? In one of the previous episodes, we widely discussed delivery semantics in distributed systems and figured out that usually it's quite challenging to obtain the exactly once. But how did Flink reach this goal, even being a distributed framework for processing data streams at a large scale? Let's take a step back. Do you remember the Java Enterprise Edition specification and related application servers? There was a rise of JEE in the early 2000s, but today it looks mostly like a legacy or at least a rare thing to be found in modern project. Most application servers offered so-called two-phase commits or 2PC for short. That's obviously related to distributed transactions. Let's learn by examples. Imagine you have an application that reads records from JMS or Java Message and Service Queue, processes them and writes results to a database. This chain may fail at any moment, right after a record is read from JMS, in between reading and processing or while trying to commit the transaction to a database. For sure we want to reach some level of delivery semantics or transactional behavior. Neither JMS nor database failures should lead to the data loss. Here two-phase commit comes to the stage. When a message is read from the queue, application server starts a distributed transaction where the JMS driver becomes the first actor. The transaction later is also propagated to a database when a processed result is ready to be committed. The commit consists of two steps or phases. At first, all sources or participants are asked whether everything is OK and if they are ready to perform a commit. If everything goes right, the second phase initiates a final commit, both to the database and message queue. This approach guarantees that reading from and writing to with some processing in between will be completed atomically or transactionally. That's a vital thing to understand before we dive deeper. Apache Flink uses a checkpointing feature. There are events with a special meaning periodically injected into the processing streams by job managers. These events are called checkpoint barriers. When an operator receives a barrier, it should persist his state to the external storage. This process is asynchronous and doesn't stop the application. After all operators persisted their states to the checkpoint storage, we can declare that a consistent application snapshot is saved and ready to use. Since some of the operators, for example sources and sinks, also track their positions in the external systems, checkpoints also contain references to the last processed offsets. For example, in the case we don't use Apache Kafka to store offsets, but use Flink Kafka source to persist offsets as a part of the application state subjected to be persisted at checkpoints. The important point to understand is that two-phase commit seems to be applicable in case of stream processing where sync support transactions and sources keep managed offsets as an internal or operator state. Take a look at the stream application that reads records from Kafka, do some processing and analytics and write the results back to Kafka. Exactly once means that the data will affect a target system or sync only once despite any failure occurring. This implies the use of transactions when writing to Kafka. A commit bundles all writes between two checkpoints. This ensures that writes are rolled back in case of a failure. Any Flink application is distributed across a few nodes and the two-phase commit addresses this goal well when use pre-commit at commit stages. When a job manager initiates a checkpoint by injecting a barrier, it represents the pre-commit phase. The barrier separates the records in a data stream into the set that belongs to the current checkpoint period versus the set that should belong to the next period.
In our example, the data source stores its Kafka offsets and passes the checkpoint barrier to the next operator. Naturally, the offset state should be internal for the operator, which means that it is managed by one of the Flink state backends and subjected for checkpointing. In our case, Kafka Sync has an external state because it writes records to the topic. In this case, in the pre-commit phase, the data sync must pre-commit its external transaction in addition to writing its state to the state backend. So for now, we have a consistent application checkpoint which is ready to be restored in case of failure. The next step is to notify all operators that the checkpoint is finished successfully. It can be considered as a second phase of 2PC. The job manager emits checkpoint completed callbacks for each operator. In our application, both Kafka source and intermediate operator do not manage any external states and therefore don't need to take any actions during the second phase. Opposite to the previous operators, the Kafka sync manages external state and should commit the Kafka transaction during the second phase. But what happens in case of failures? If at least one of the operators is unable to commit a first phase, the whole operator set is aborted and restored to the last successful checkpoint. If the pre-commit phase was successful, then the commit phase should be eventually succeeded and guaranteed by the underlying implementation. If the second step falls, the entire application restarts from the last known successful checkpoint according to the selected restart strategy eventually followed by another commit attempt. So let's wrap up. Flink checkpointing acts as a foundation for the distributed transactions that covers sources, sinks and in-between processing. Operators that keep external state should use guaranteed eventual transactions provided by external systems, for example Kafka transactions. End-to-end -end exactly once is not a joke, but a reality. It was Alex Sergienke, I hope this topic was interesting and not too boring for you. Have a great day, bye.